Hello, this is Aaron with iBoard Repair and iPhone Data Recovery, and today I'm working on an iPhone XR that's in here for data recovery. It uh, seems to just be flat dead. Um, I didn't get much information on this phone other than um, it, they said it crashed. I'm not sure what, are, what they referred to, what stuff's referring to. Um, I, I haven't done much yet other than take off the, the screen on this phone, and it looks unremarkable. Um, the phone doesn't look like it's been smashed or broken, and it doesn't look like it has any water damage. I've only taken my very first diagnostic step, which is to plug in my DC power supply probes here to my battery connector and observe the amp draw. And when I do that, um, we can see basically nothing. So I'll plug my probes to the battery connector here. I'll press the power button and I get no amp draw whatsoever when I prompt it to boot. Oh, there it goes. It gave me a little bit. It's trying to at least. If I hold it, nothing. If I just press it, a little spike. So what does that mean to me? Um, I believe I'm going to have a short power rail on this one. Um, my, my first guess is probably going to be uh, maybe the 3VO NAND capacitor may possibly be short. Um, I do have a little bit of discoloration here on the shield, and I thought that was strange because it didn't seem like this had been opened up. Um, but I'll take this motherboard out of the housing, and uh, we can start diagnosing it. Okay, so I pulled this board out of the housing now. Like I said, I, I expect to see some power rail short on here. It's not a main power rail. You know what, I do see a little bit of water damage. I see some corrosion right underneath here. Okay, so this was water damaged. It's, it's not a lot of water damage, but it does look like it took a little bit. I see it right there. So... Here's my NAND chip. Let's just make sure I don't have a short on there first. But I believe I have some like 1v8 power lines right here and that, that could also be uh, causing this problem. I'll look at ZXW so I can see what lines I'm working with here. So after just taking a really quick look, I have a, let's see, a 1V8 capacitor right here. And that 1V8 line is also on the other side where I saw some of that corrosion. So this line may be short. Let's see. It is short. So that's really nice to see because that could also uh, absolutely be causing my problem. It's most likely going to be a shorted capacitor in this area by where we can see this corrosion um, because that 1v8 line also goes under there. So I'm going to remove this shield. And um, this may be it. This may be a very simple job. The jobs can be very fast when you know what you're looking for, when you can read the signs properly. So, let's see. And yeah, there's my shorted capacitor. So right, we were able to see that little peaking bit of corrosion coming through, and those are definitely short capacitors. Let's see if they're both on the same line. They are, the 1V8 IO line. 
So that's an important line, and without that, the phone will not boot. So this is great. I should be able to pull these capacitors up, and the phone should boot right away after that. So that will most likely have cleared the line. So I thought it was probably going to be a 3VO NAND capacitor, but these are 1V8 NAND capacitors. This line does more than power NAND, but it does also power NAND. Let's see if we're still short there with the multimeter. No longer short. So now when I test on my DC power supply, I should see a more normal boot sequence. So I will once again grab my DC power supply probes, connect them to the battery connector and prompt this phone to boot. I believe this is my power button line, but let me double check that. Yeah, that was correct. So these go to power button connector here. I'm sorry, the battery connector. And then I will prompt this phone to boot with the power button line. Hello. Um, is this 8858? Yes, it is. For Aaron? Yep. Usually right here. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, yeah, like I was saying, you may have seen it. Keep an eye up here. I already did notice a, a normal, uh, a normal boot sequence. So before we had nothing. It would just kind of spike when I was tapping it. Now when I press this, it's always that 0.07 is like the start of a boot sequence and then once this gets up to like the 0.2s then I could pretty much say it's booting. It will continue to rise but that's good enough for me. So this should be booting now. I can grab a battery screen and a power connector or a battery, battery screen and a charge port, I'm sorry, and um, I'll show you that it's booting. So in this case, I expect that their screen and charge port are going to work fine. So I'll just go ahead and use that. Uh, this job was a very quick and easy, simple job, but it's because I knew where to look. Um, it would be a little bit obvious if you were to take off that shield and you were to see that there was corrosion on those capacitors, that they were bad. Um, but I was able to pretty much almost call what line was going to be bad even before I saw where the corrosion was. And that just is just because I know how to read the signals well. So even if those um, capacitors were not showing corrosion like that, I would still have a very good idea of where I could have started to look for the problems on this phone because um, because I was able to read these these symptoms so well. I called a 3VO NAND capacitor, but this was a 1V8 NAND capacitor. Still a very very close and similar line to what I thought was going to be the problem. So I like that I can recognize these patterns like this because if it wasn't as simple as being able to see those corroded components I still would have been able to figure this one out. So let's boot it up make sure it's booting. I'm not getting any image. Probably because I would assume this is a bad screen. So let me grab another screen and just double check that. So I got a good screen. I guess I don't really know that um, all the problems are solved on this board yet. 
Um, I do know that the board is booting because I saw on my DC power supply the proper boot sequence. Um, but that's not to say that my image is working correctly, or my image lined, I should say. So that's still a possibility of being having a secondary issue. But with this new screen, I'll be able to see if that's the case or not. So now, do we do we have an Apple logo? No, no Apple logo. So I'm going to plug it into the charge port and make sure I'm getting a proper uh, amp draw from there. Oh, there we go. We got an Apple logo. So for whatever reason, that power button didn't want to prompt it to boot. So let me double check the passcode on here. Great, this one gave me two passcodes, so hopefully one of them is correct. That does mean they were uncertain, which is not good. There's no passcode at all. Okay, so that was it. Like I was saying, this job was pretty simple. And I like it when they're simple like this. It doesn't you know, take hours every single time to figure these problems out. Sometimes if you just uh, have the right expertise, you can go straight to where the problem is. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Bye.